Resuming our patrol missions between the downtime in the story beats of Star Trek Online, we have the investigation case of Celis 2 awaiting us along our route. Celis 2 is a binary star system with seven planets and a Starfleet star base 114. Its biggest problems have been the presence of the Orion Syndicate in the Celis sector, and its standard duties are to resupply Federation vessels coming and going from the former neutral zone border. Its commanding officer is Cleveland, and we're here to help sort out an undisclosed issue. Entering the system, Commander Thiral of Starbase 114 contacts us. The Andorian welcomes us, affirming our orders to arrive, and fills us in on the details. Several officers have been injured in suspected accidents around the station, and Commander Cleveland wants it investigated, but their crew is taxed already, so external help was requested. The starbase is a standard configuration for a medium-sized habitat and in orbit of a ringed terrestrial world. Around its perimeter sits stationary buoys, not for defence but possibly communications or sensor scans. Beaming over, we are met with the commander face to face, who tells us that most of the security team is working as maintenance and repair right now, presumably from Orion Syndicate activity and that these accidents and damage may be the results of sabotage. We can ask about the accidents themselves, or straight up ask for suspects. Asking about the accidents, he tells us that Ensign Seafrost was hit by falling cargo crates, four engineers were caught by an exploding EPS conduit, and then in sickbay, Councillor Janan was given a transfusion of Bolian blood. Highly corrosive to non-Bolians, so she's lucky to be alive. These accidents, according to Thiral, seem too large to be real mistakes, so we ask for any suspects. Thiral tells us that only three people have access to the areas where the sabotage could have been enacted to create these accidents. The two commanders, Cleveland and Thiral, and Lieutenant Cypher. However, the station commander was not present during two of these incidents, and Thiral is briefing us, so he suggests we check in with Cypher. More than that, it seems he was always nearby when these events happened. He also directs us to the areas of the accidents. Heading down the turbo lift, we arrive outside Cargo Bay 3 and can see a cluster of crates and personnel inside. Having brought Nulia with us, she scans the EPS conduits and confirms that they do show signs of sabotage, and that Cypher's DNA is present. Looking at his assigned duties, he had no reason to be working on this conduit, so that does not look good. We can find the lieutenant across the way in Cargo Bay 2. He is an unknown species, but so far seems unperturbed by our presence. Stepping outside, we can find a terminal that allows us to access the sick bay logs from here. Once more, Nulia investigates the records and finds that the sick bay logs are fine. They recorded the events as it unfolded, but Councillor Janan's personnel file has been tampered with twice. It seems that a program was added that altered her file to require Bolian blood when it was next checked by the emergency medical hologram. The EMH therefore acted on the faulty programming and administered the incorrect blood transfusion, then the medical records were restored to their pre-tampered state to hide the initial sabotage. What's more, it showed that Cypher's access codes were used to log in to the medical files on the day. Next, we head over to Cargo Bay 1. In here we find four crewmen and a toppled gravity lift. This must be the one that malfunctioned days ago now, but it looks like it was maintained as an area of suspicion. Sending the diagnostics back to the armager, Commander Tarsi answers and confirms that the safety interlocks of the lift have been disabled. Only a skilled technician could do this, and Cypher is one such technician. Certified for Gravlift maintenance. Nulia 
chimes in, affirming that all the evidence does all point to Lieutenant Cypher, but she calls it circumstantial and what's more, Nulia finds it all too easy. If it were so simple, Thiral could have solved it all himself with lunchtime to spare, busy or not. Additionally, Cypher has a spotless record and computer aptitude scores were well ahead of his peers, so she reckons that if Cypher was guilty, but he could have covered his tracks far more efficiently. So the next step, I guess, is to confront the man himself. We return to the cargo bay with the lieutenant in it. We tell him Commander Thiral suspects a saboteur on board and Cypher protests his innocence, then tells us to ask away. So we ask him about the cargo lift accident, and he tells us that he had repaired that lift two days before it flipped. It was all operational and everything done by the book. We ask him about the specific EPS conduit that blew in during 4, and he tells us that he has not been in that section for some time, but that one of the engineering team found Cypher's hyperspanner tool there. Cypher assumes it had been borrowed and left by mistake. His personal toolkit, after all, is not locked, so anyone could have accessed it. We ask about Councillor Janan, and apparently the two are close friends. He even says he's taking care of her pet cat, Cambridge, when she recovers. Apparently he did visit her frequently in sickbay, which does put him at the scene, but if they were friends it seems strange motivation to attempt to kill her. Finally, we ask him how long he has been in his current position on Alpha Shift's technician team. He has been here for a month, transferred from Gamma Shift eight months before that, from the night shift to the early morning one. He states that it has taken him a long time to adjust, and he's been downing Raktor Geno to stay awake, but even then he falls asleep easily. We then ask him to break down his daily routine. So he does. He wakes up, grabs breakfast, briefs his team, then makes the rounds to check in and hand out more assignments, Mid-shift is a coffee break and then he usually idles in Cargo Bay 4 while he drinks it and reads a little. He picks that one because it's the least used cargo bay. After that it's rounds again to check in with the teams and then work till beta shift clocks in. Nulia looks at the timeline of when the sabotage happens and confirms it's around the latter half of Alpha shift, just after Cypher goes on break. We decide to look specifically at the replicator from which he gets his drinks, the one just outside Cargo Bay 4. And Nulia's hunch was correct. The replicator recipe for Rakta Gino has been altered, but only for when Cypher's voice is detected ordering. It has the drug Impetrazine added to it, which is used to suppress higher brain function. However, when mixed with Klingon strength caffeine in the Raktor Geno, it could create a state of altered consciousness. Cypher is not falling asleep on his lunch breaks, he's being drugged. This state leaves him highly suggestible and foggy, someone could be manipulating him. Additionally, Nulia detects a transmitter beacon is alerting someone whenever this spiked coffee is created. Nulia suggests deliberately triggering it to see who responds while we stake out Cargo Bay 4. It's likely that whoever is trying to frame Cypher might see this as an opportunity to frame him in the act, apparently convicting him beyond a doubt in our eyes, so we trigger the beacon. Nulia preps a security team from the Armager to beam to us if needed, and we move to Cargo Bay 4. We look for an area from where we can survey the room, and only have to wait a few moments before the whine of a transporter beam materialises Commander Thiral. He beams in, looking shifty AF, so we call out our security team. In his best Scooby-Doo villain impersonation, he tells us that we have uncovered his ruse. He was going to try to dispose of Cypher via transfer before we arrived, so we'd end up chasing the suspect, but we got here too quickly. He admits to working for the Orion Syndicate, and states that if he got caught, at least it's Starfleet he has to deal with. In terms of motive, he claims that his bondmate is in debt with the Syndicate, and that he would be forgiven if Thoral helped the Syndicate. 
He began with information like patrols, watch patterns, and freighter schedules, which is precisely the sort of information pirates would want to know. Thrall got nervous and started trying to cover his tracks and shift the blame to someone else, but to no avail. He says he will not resist and we are free to take him in, so we beam him to the Armager's brig. After taking a moment to ponder this result, we return to the Armager 2, our saboteur rooted out. Still, I wonder what will happen to his family. Hopefully we can arrange something for them too, but the Syndicate is persistent and insidious. Thanks for watching this patrol mission from the storylines of Star Trek Online. There are plenty more to cover in the downtime between the bigger story updates, so until the next one. I've been Rick, thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next time for another. Goodbye.